Welcome back in. Scott Cole, Nick Mazetsko along with you. And we got a lot to talk about today in sports. And boy, I mean, always a good weekend in sports. But we try to look forward on the show. We try to preview what's coming up. If something crazy happens, like, you know, last time we were talking so much about the All-Star game and maybe the lackluster of it. But really, this has been a slow, slow week for sports. Uh, when you have the MLB and the players' discussions and possibly games getting canceled, et cetera, et cetera, being at the kind of the top of the list of topics, you know, it's been a slow week in sports. Yeah. I mean, it, it's one of those that like, I don't know why it's just sort of that weird window we have pre NCAA tournament post NBA all-star break that it seems, it seems like the NBA games, a lot of blowouts this week. It seems like teams haven't quite gotten back into gear. We're not in playoffs anywhere, you know, mid season of hockey. And yeah, what we've got is the, the, the major league baseball, lockout and I, man when you have to talk about you know things like lockouts and player strikes and missing games it's really a depressing topic to be talking about in what march is usually such a fun month of sports sit there and be like well i mean like right now i'm in arizona this is when spring training was supposed to kick off this week and they're all canceled and everybody's sad here i mean well not that sad it's 75 degrees and beautiful but there's no you know i don't get to go watch the third string cleveland players play yeah, so, yeah, we're missing split squad games right now. I mean, how, uh, heaven forbid. Uh, but I mean, it's a thing where apparently the Players Association is even more unionized than they've ever been, even since the 1994 strike. So, and I think the big thing is, is you know, the players to get these, you know, to get these seasons in for these last couple seasons dealing with COVID, they've taken some pay cuts and. Now they're looking for like, hey, we'd love to get see some of more of this revenue. Yeah, there's so much that's going into this. And I know it's like it's really easy. The buzzword that you see people put out there is billions against millionaires. And, you know, here's the thing with all that goes into it. And baseball already has the most complicated salary cap. We see it's a soft cap with a luxury tax service time and, you know, arbitration. And I'm just throwing out buzzwords at this point. And, and most people have already zoned out. I think that's the tough part is that, you know, we're listening to these negotiations and you're seeing the reports come out about how you know major league baseball has made concessions here the players association has made concessions here and i think the grand majority 99 percent of the people who don't pay attention to baseball or aren't that hard into baseball are watching this going i got nothing like it, this is not as simple as you know i want more wages and more cut of revenue there's just so much that both sides are trying to negotiate that i think that's why it's maybe fallen a little bit to the wayside i feel like not a lot of people even though it's a slow week yeah, yeah. this is like fourth on ESPN like the, it is buried on a lot of these news sites because I just and don't I think, think people understand the, it and the want playoffs to talk are about over it. uh in the NBA and the NFL drafts way past uh it's like just give us somewhere to go this summer where we can have a hot dog and a beer if you haven't figured it out by then then we'll get on board but you're either hardcore right you're either all in you can't wait for pitchers and catchers to report or you could care less Right. I mean, maybe you care about your hometown team and where they're at and and hopefully, you know, they're not out of it by the time that you care, uh, which has been the case a, a lot of times in baseball, which continues. to It's just ugly. Right. I mean, the bonds and Clemens things, this Hall of Fame thing, this holier yeah. than thou afraid to change all about tradition. Well, you know, what's it worth if you're not playing? Just play. You're making millions, billions. Just play. Well, and what's. And, what, and the crazy part is, I mean, this is, you know, this doesn't even get into what Manfred has been looking for over the last 10 years, which is trying to recapture that casual base, that casual fan base with things like, you know, the new extra inning rules by putting somebody on second base and pitch clocks and shortening the amount of breaks. I mean, they've been trying to capture this group of people who have fallen out of love with the game of baseball because it's too slow. There's too much going on. I don't really want to watch it on a Saturday afternoon. I'd rather go play with the kids. And this is only going to hurt them more. Now, now the number one thing that people are going to think about baseball is canceled no. games because there's no way this deal is getting no. done without losing some sort of regular season game. They've already missed spring training, which, you know, we laugh at split squad games and all that, but you know, in Florida and in Arizona, this is where, you know, an activity that parents take their kids to and have some fun out there at the smaller ballparks and, meet some of these players and now they're going to miss some those games and they're going to miss some of those regular season games the pr nightmare major league baseball has right now i don't know if they could uh, ever recover they've been from trying this. to recover for a long time <laughs> you know moments of greatness right flat yeah flashes they've in the pan right the, the all-star game is never <laughs> what it has been i mean it's just that that part's kind of over and we've kind of just fallen out of love and i and i think a little bit of some of it is hey we're in a twitter highlight world right i mean it's uh 
We much rather watch Ja Morant go crazy. We'll get to that in a moment. Then, then deal with this stuff right now. It's like, there's so there's too much going on, right? Video games yeah. have taken over streaming services. I mean, when you, when you would you rather watch a nine inning game or binge four episodes of Yellowstone, I mean, people are going to watch Yellowstone. That's uh, I hate to hate it. Boy. And, and by the way, you want to talk about the tough part? Have you, have you yes. like major league, the show, it's a fun video game, three but nobody actually plays a yeah, nine three. inning game in that. They all play like yeah. the shortened four or six inning. Cause no, even they don't yeah, want to play you a hit nine inning game. Head. And I don't know, maybe we should go should go to three innings. I don't know. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, let's move on. Um, we, You know, we talked a lot about the NBA uh, and the lacklusterness of the All-Star game and then how great uh, Steph Curry is. Uh, that leads us to, like, let's just start talking about it. We're on that All-Star, you know, post-All-Star game stretch of, you know, it's... The, the it's like a third of the season. The all-star game is never at the halfway point. There's like a third of the season left. And certainly the hottest topic yeah. right now is James Harden and Joel Embiid with the 76ers. People are ready to crown them. They're like, go ahead and give them the Larry O'Brien trophy. Yeah. It's, you know, I love what I've seen. I mean, it, let, take it for what it is. They've only had a couple games. They haven't, you know, exactly played the, the murderers row of the NBA, but <laughs> Obviously, the high pick and roll with Harden and Embiid looks really good. They've surrounded them with shooters. Tyrese Maxey looks very comfortable, you know, yeah. running the point, but playing more off as a two, actually, once he gives the ball to Harden, run that pick and roll. My concern for the Sixers is their bench. There's not a lot of depth there. You've got Cork Miles coming off the bench. You've got Niang coming off the bench. Nobody's sitting there going, oh, yeah, Cork Miles is in the game. Finally, we're, we're in good shape. I don't love their depth. I don't love the fact that they lost Andre Drummond, who, even though the Nets are struggling, Drummond was a nice piece. And now instead of that, they have Paul Millsap. And I don't think Millsap fits in very well. So I still think the Sixers... Maybe the best in the East. Miami probably has something to say about that because they've looked really good. But certainly teams are not looking forward to facing this high pick and roll with with Harden and beat, especially with a Harden <laughs> that looks motivated to play. Yeah, uh, I think he's ready to just he's happy to be back in back in the talk. And what I'm loving, first of all, is like I'm I'm glad the NBA is back to the dynamic duo. The super teams have proven not to work, whether it's been injuries or people getting older. It just doesn't work out. I'm glad to see the like the dynamic duo with some hot rookies kind of being like the mix, because that's when I think about the NBA for for decades. That's what I think about is, all right, you, you got, you know, Magic and Kareem and, and Jordan and Pippen and, you know, those kind of duos. I'm, I'm hoping the the edge of the super teams is done. So with all the moves. Right. And by the way, the 76ers are trying to get DeAndre Jordan uh because I think yeah. he's done with the Lakers. So maybe that'll help the Drummond woes, but who are you looking for? Let's talk about who you see in the finals. And then let's talk about this MVP race. Cause all of a sudden it's starting to get pretty interesting. So finals West, I still have the Suns. I think the Phoenix Suns are the best team in the West. Once they get Chris Paul back, Paul's going to miss six to eight weeks with that fracture in his thumb. Obviously the team looks a little different without him, you know, more Devin Booker running the point, but I think they're with Chris Paul, him running with Aiton and Booker. It's they're darn near unstoppable. They've got depth on the bench. They got shooters. Um, if there's a team to upset and maybe make a run, Memphis is hot right now. And I'm telling you, John Morant <laughs> might be the most exciting player to watch. Uh, I don't know what that, what he's got I, in I the love, last 10 years. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's unbelievable. And, you know, you add in Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson, they've got a really solid squad, but I still think the Suns are the class of the West East is a little more murky. I'm going to wait to see on the Sixers to see how they mesh going forward. I think two games. And I think one of them is against the Timberwolves who are one of the worst teams out there. Like I'm not going to like crown them champs quite yet. Um, I really like Miami. I think as long as they stay healthy, that's their key. Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, OG, and they're like the, the the that team is tough. And you know if Duncan Robinson can find a shot because he is so streaky, they're tough to play because they can score from outside, they score from inside. Um, I think the Heat are probably the class, but the East to me, I don't know about you, Scott. The East is murky because I feel like there are Real three or murky. four teams that can make that run. Yeah, I mean the West is clear. Obviously, you know when you look at Phoenix. What they've done on the road this year it tells you alone, like this is this is a team that's meant to go through the playoffs, right? And perhaps have yeah. short series and not and not drag things out and possibly should have already won themselves, you know, uh, a couple titles there with Chris Paul. And it just shows, man, how good CP3 is uh, and what kind of impact he has made for that team. We'll see how they do with them out, you know, if they if they can you know, sort of maintain out there. 
Uh, but for me, uh, you mean me to go first on the picks? Or you you started off. Who, who's in your finals? I heard I heard all this yabber yabber yatter, but I never got down to this team versus this team. Who do you got? Uh, I'll take I'll take the Suns and I'll take you know early in the season I was high on the Bulls, but I think the Heat. I think it's gonna be Suns Heat. Um, the one question mark. What does Golden State look like once Draymond Green gets back? Because that team looks kind of out of place without him, but he's supposed to be back soon. He's the one thorn in Phoenix's side that I'm worried about. But I'll take I'll take the Suns in the heat right now. You got, uh, you got any dark horses? Um, East, uh, I, I think the East has the most dark horses. I feel like I just got this feeling about Chicago. Levine, mm. Io's really come on nicely in that point DeRo- guard DeRozan's role. just going crazy. I mean, it's DeRozan's just... going wild. Vucevic is a beast in the middle. The, my one concern with Chicago is I don't love how they run their offense. You get a lot of iso ball with DeRozan, and while he can put up 40, if he's not shooting well, your offense is dead. I don't love it, but um, I think with the, the amount of weapons Chicago has, they certainly can make a run deep in the East. All right, here's my pick. I'll, I'll, I'll throw some explanation out there. I got Warriors and Bucks. That's that's gonna be that's that's my pick right wow. now. For some reason, I just feel like Steph Curry is on a mission, right? And you're right. If and this this goes for you could say this about a lot of teams. If they could get healthy, right? If they could get their players back, right? Um, I just don't see any of these playing teams making a run, right? And I'm I was off this Lakers team from the beginning, right? It's just like. We've seen this happen before where you try to take a bunch of stars that are past their prime. Tip of the cap to LeBron, even though I'm I'm not a big LeBron fan, as, as people know. I'm a Jordan guy. But, I mean, the numbers that he's put up with all the absences of AD and just Russell Westbrook can't throw it in the ocean right now. But I, for some reason, I feel like Steph Curry is on a mission. I think the popular pick is Phoenix. I think they're the most prepared for it, especially if Chris Paul comes back and he's and he's good to go. I just love that no one's talking about Milwaukee and Giannis is just dominant. The team is built to be in the playoffs. If I got a dark horse, I think I, I, for some reason I like Memphis. Uh, even when uh, yeah. John Morant missed those 12 games, they held pace. And by the way, watch out for the nuggets. If they can get some of their people back. Speaking of it, can we get some people yeah. back? Uh, the Joker has been doing a great job and maybe putting together an MVP season. And I think that's a nice segue into who you got for MVP? You know, you don't have to give me the, you know, the number one, number one, but who do you got at least in, in the conversation? I mean, for me, I think you're looking, if I was taking one name off the top of my head, to me right now, John Moran is not just the best player in the league. He's the most exciting player in the league and he's the most valuable to their team. And I think that is the definition of MVP is I think without John Morant, this Grizzlies team isn't sniffing the playoffs and they're right now a top four team. And I think that's, what's crazy about what John Moran has been able to do. I saw a stat where I think he has 20 games of 20 plus or more paint points standing at six foot three. Like he is a beast inside. He, he makes more plays than anybody. I know there are a lot of great players out there. Obviously I'm in Phoenix. I love Devin Booker. I love what Booker has been able to Steph Curry has been doing amazing things, but yep. my money right now, John Morant is the most valuable player to any team in the NBA. I, I mean, when's the last time you've seen somebody that can make a 34 foot jump shot and dunk on seven footers. It just, that's a combo you don't see too often, especially at just a little bit over six feet. Um, He's got a little Allen Iverson to him too. He's just he's just a human highlight yeah. machine. And remember, uh, you know this team is kind of built like that Philly team was for Iverson, where it's like, all right, John Moran's going to run the show, but we picked up some nice players that can, you know, let Ja be Ja. So I would love to see the Grizzlies there. I would love to see John Morant um, as the MVP. I think Joel Embiid's got a real chance at it if he can maintain the same stat line with Harden. Right. If he's still dominant with, let's be honest, I'll just say it with the ball hog that is James Harden. Um, yep. And Harden seems fine just dishing it to him. So if, if Harden is wanting to share the sugar, right. And, and as long as they keep winning, and I think Harden has always been willing to pass on a team that's winning. Um, yeah. Uh, Joel Embiid is probably the leader in the clubhouse, to be honest. Well, and you, and you can't count out guys like, 
Luka Doncic, who, you know, that team trades away. Kristaps Porzingis, suddenly Luka sure, is I the only Luka. large European man in the middle. I mean, he's unbelievable. You talk about the Bucks, Giannis, I, pound for pound, I don't care when if Kevin Durant is healthy. I think Giannis is the hardest player in the NBA to stop. He's just if you took Milwaukee monster and, and put them in Los Angeles, Giannis would be the MVP almost every year. It's because sure. they're in Milwaukee 100%. and they're in the East. And like, yeah. let's be honest, even though the Heat are, are you know, one of the best teams in the East, if it flashes up on your screen, Milwaukee versus Miami this weekend, I'm like, yeah, I guess, you know, I don't know. I'll probably go to, I'll probably go to Lowe's or Home Depot, maybe Bed, Bath and Beyond if there's time. You know, like I, it's not, it's not must see TV. Um, and that's, that's the problem you get with some of these small markets. And I still consider Miami a, a small market team as well. So the Eastern Conference desperately needs Philly to be good. For decades, they've needed the Knicks to return. If Chicago could somehow keep some sort of consistency, I think the East will, you know, finally start to get uh, a little tip of the cap. You know, like, I, I mean, DeRose is doing these crazy things that only – uh, some of the greatest players in the NBA have done with, you know, eight plus games over 35 points, but it's still like, okay. I mean, they were first for like the first time in a long time that Chicago has been first at this point uh, in the Eastern conference. Certainly Miami jumped them real, like real quick. And, you know, they had like a game lead the next thing, you know, Miami has like a two game lead, but um, yeah, I would love, to, I would love to see Ja win it. Um, of course we haven't had really like a true center win anything in a long time. Uh, I would have time. to, I would have to go look and see the last, it had to be Shaq. Shaq had to be the last true center that won the MVP. Oh boy. Uh, NBA. Well, Jokic is technically a center, but uh, he plays. Yeah, so many okay. Guys. Okay. Say, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I see that. Hey, he's a point I, forward I for me. I think the but, last yeah. true center you're looking is Oh three. Tim Duncan won it. And yeah, like I somebody's mean, like, and he's more of a power forward too. So like someone that's got like their back to the basket, we haven't seen like a pick so and roll Shaq in 2000. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Sh Shaq it's in 2000, few and far between. David Robinson in 95, Hakeem in 94. It's like a running back or defensive player winning MVP in the NFL, right? Yeah. Like it's a quarterback thing. It's a point guard, shooting guard kind of league. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, let's be honest. If Memphis makes the finals and Ja wins the MVP, how would that be for a small market team? That'd be nuts. I mean, and that, that's what's wild about the uh, the East is like you look at the teams that are competing out here, you know, Miami, Chicago, Milwaukee, Boston. Like these are young teams. Boston's got this duo. Jason with Tatum, Tatum is fantastic. He's yeah, he's, he's fantastic. Yeah. And like, I mean, then you got, you know, it, 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 you know, you we were talking about super teams. That's what's what's fun is I feel like did Milwaukee was Milwaukee the one that broke super teams was Milwaukee with Giannis. <laughs> but I mean, again, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, you're not sitting there going, oh, wow, look at the super team. Yeah. You know, and but, you know, they, like, but both of those players, like Middleton, is just a sniper, right? Yeah. And that's what he does very well. And Drew Holiday is one of the best defensive point guards. I mean, you put him on another point guard, he causes all kind of problems. I mean, ask yeah. ask CB three, you know, ask CP three and all these. I mean, it's he's a he's a problem. And they uh, but you're right. I mean, I mean, yeah, on, you're right. But laser. like. You know, they don't have three all-stars on their team, right? Right. I mean, that's just that's just kind of how it goes. Let's talk about the NFL. We got the draft just around the corner, and certainly GMs are <laughs> they are up late at night thinking about who is going to be our quarterback in the upcoming season. And you can put Denver, Pittsburgh with the retirement of Big Ben, and Carolina Panthers with this, the atrocious Sam Darnold. The, the, those teams are staying up real late right now, figuring out, man, who is going to be their head person coming up in the upcoming season. Yeah. And again, so much of, of where, who's going to be leading these teams. It's, it's a domino effect. It's we're waiting to see what's going on with Russell Wilson. We're waiting to see what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. When see if Tom Brady decides that he feels like playing in San Francisco. I mean, there's a <laughs> lot of dominoes that have to fall. Uh, I feel bad for the NFL teams that are looking for quarterbacks in the draft. Cause I don't, love this draft uh you know and i think it's exemplified by the fact that the top quarterback has moved around a lot early in the season it was matt corral or sam howell those guys have fallen off then malik willis out of liberty got a lot of push and then you know he sort of fell down the board now i think consensus it's kenny pickett i'm not a big kenny pickett fan i've i mean i know you watch a lot of ac football he's a sure. guy who i've seen him play live i've seen a lot of these guys play live to be honest yeah i mean pickett's a nice player i know people can talk about hand size all they want i just that, that stuff doesn't bother me but I, when i just watch him play i don't see him 
as a difference he's maker. A, he's a Derek Carr, uh, you know, Daniel Jones, Mitch yeah. Trubisky kind of guy. He's he's fine. I I don't think anybody. Or it could be Tom Brady. Like you, or it could that's be. that's the thing is like you you really don't know, right? I mean, and that's just rolling the dice. I mean, we got a list of like maybe five good quarterbacks coming out of the draft, and like it's likely that four of the five or maybe all five will just be bust. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you're probably looking. I mean, Malik Willis and Desmond Ritter probably have the highest ceiling of, you know, these guys are athletic quarterbacks who can go out and make plays with their legs. You know, everybody's talking about, you know, Desmond Ritter is kind of that Kyler Murray build. He's a little he's, of course, bigger than Baby Yoda, but, you know, he wants to use his leg. Willis is, has a big arm, can has a lot of mobility, um, but. I, there's just questions of can they make it at the next level? And I, I, I was talking with somebody about this, and I, I don't remember who, but, you know, you look at quarterbacks in the NFL, and I want to know if you agree with me or not. You know, all you can talk all about what college they go to and who they had coaching them, but to me, quarterbacks are more determined by where they get drafted and how they develop in those first couple years after college, more so than any other position. Because I feel like wide receivers come dime a dozen from college and step in right away and make plays. But sure. quarterbacks need that environment to, to sort of foster them. Well, you're, you're playing entirely different defenses and exotic blitz packages. Yeah. And to be honest, like, you know, you're playing at the college level. There might be one or two players on the other side uh, that could chase you down. Uh, in this league, you got guys that are 300 pounds and played nose tackle that can chase you down if you try to get outside the pocket. I, I, it might be the year of the free agent. And I mean, when I was looking at the free agent list, I wasn't excited about that either. You know, Andy Dalton, Cam Newton, Tyrod Taylor, Jameis Winston, T Teddy Bridgewater, Marcus Mariota. I mean, you know, these kind of names that I mentioned. Now, I, I talked about Mitch Trubisky earlier. It's like when those are like your top five to ten quarterback options for some of these teams like Denver, Pittsburgh, Carolina, Washington, who are now the commanders. I don't know if I can ever figure that out. Uh, I'm calling them for the Detroit. football team from here on out. It's fine. And now Tampa Bay. I mean, Tampa Bay uh, needs a quarterback. And I guess we go back to the topic that we had last week of like, okay, well, where's Russell Wilson going to go? Where's Aaron Rodgers going to go? Is Tom Brady going to come back and play just based on need, right? I mean, it might be like a week four thing where Tom Brady's like, all right, sure, you know, come back and throw it around a little bit. But I think it's it's clear to say that, you know, you talk about Kenny Pickett, Willis. Uh, if I'm more on the dice on anybody, it might be Sam Howell. Sure. Sure. I mean, I, well, I mean. Just because he's, he's got some mobility and he's just like, He's a finisher. He wins games like he's got that like tough person mentality. But look how good, you know, when you talk about quarterbacks jumping right in. Right. Justin Fields struggled and certainly he didn't start this, this season. And then, uh, you know, Trevor Lawrence, who I think is one of the best quarterbacks to ever come out of college football. It's tough, like just jumping right in, especially when you're probably going to get if you're a good quarterback, you're going to get drafted by a bad team, even though Mel Kuyper doesn't see Kenny Pickett coming off the board until, uh, you know, number 11 or so. If, if Washington decides to take a quarterback uh, in that first round, if they don't, he could drop even further than that. That should tell you how weak this quarterback class is. Yeah. The other interesting thing is, you know, there are a lot of quarterbacks out there that might be available by trade outside the big names. Carson Wentz in Indianapolis, Sam Darnold, we talked about if somebody feels like taking a shot on him. The name that I don't hear a lot of people talking about is Jimmy Garoppolo. And if you're not going to be playing for the big name quarterbacks, if you're not looking into the draft, listen, he got that shoulder fix. And this is a guy who has won a lot of games in a in a tough division he's gone out there he's led teams to the playoffs listen i know he's not the flashiest i know he gets that game manager moniker and i know he's not gonna he's, win you a game right but you're exactly. just hoping he doesn't lose it for you but if you're a team like i mean again i'm a fan of a team like cleveland who is not looking for that kind of quarterback you have a nick chubb and a cream hunt that you're gonna build an offense around you're looking for somebody who's not gonna turn the ball over jimmy garoppolo with a winning pedigree he can fit in a lot of these teams that already have some weapons around him he's probably not great for a team like i don't know if jacksonville was looking for a team with no weapons right. like you're not looking for that but for some of these mid-tier teams you know he would be a great fit by the way i know denver wants aaron Rodgers, but he'd be a great fit in denver because you got a good running game you got yep. Cortland sutton out there you got tim Patrick. Patrick, I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo might be that little diamond in the rough out of all these quarterbacks. Yeah, the Broncos said they're going all in. Like, they're like, we're not having another season here in Denver without some sort of, you know, serviceable quarterback at least. And I think that's why you're seeing, you know, like,
like Kyler Murray and the Cardinals, like what they're like, doing? dude, we, we got to fix this because <laughs> like it, look at the rest of the league. It looks really bad for, uh, you know, not a half of it, but a third of the league looked really bad at the quarterback position, uh, especially as needs go. And, you know, come on, don't don't be that guy. I think we've seen uh, when you fall out of favor with a team, it's really hard to get on with another team and another community and all that. And, and certainly they got the pieces there in Arizona to be successful, uh, which is crazy that that's turned into the division in football yeah. uh, when it was the NFC East for so long. But uh you and know, when the NFC West, remember, was so bad for so long. I remember the NFC West put nine and seven teams and eight and eight teams in the playoffs. <laughs> hey, it flips, man. You know, just like uh, just like you know, Western Eastern Conference of basketball and NFC and AFC. Uh, right now, all the talent is out there in the West, at least for now. We'll see where Russell Wilson goes. Uh, we'll see where Aaron Rodgers goes. We'll see if Aaron Donald continues to play uh, out there, if he is taking the Super Bowl ring and calling it a career. Uh, we'll continue to move through this NFL draft. Uh, I think we both agree these the quarterback's not the answer, uh, but it's going to get real interesting. We start to talk about pass rushers and we talk about some of these skill position players out there. There is a lot of skill positions and a lot of yeah. impact players to be had. It's just not at the quarterback position. No. All right. Well, uh, you know, we had a bunch of topics to get into, but we run out of time again. I, let's save the Art Briles talk for next week. Uh, certainly, that is uh, something that needs to be more unpacked than a minute or two. Uh, as what a roller coaster that has been. But it's kind of wetted our whistle to get ready for some college football, some NFL. Uh, we know we're going to blink, Nick, and it's going to be right around the corner. Cannot wait to see what happens this weekend in the world of sports. It's yeah, it's the best. It's the best time as we get towards March. Uh, this is the peak to be a sports fan with all that goes on. So uh, it's only going to get better from here. Appreciate everyone watching. If you're listening out there, we are on YouTube and you can find us on all the social medias at Scott Cole show at Nick Mazesco. And of course, we appreciate you listening out there on where you are, on where your podcast can be found as we continue to bring you. Well, our crazy thoughts and, and topics throughout this Really slow week of sports, and we're hopefully it picks up in the following week. And of course, our thoughts out there with the folks uh, in Ukraine with everything going on that certainly takes any precedence over the world of sports. Be safe, and we hope we can find some peace here over these next couple of weeks.